This is a story about Sandra Hamm. She is the United States longest held wrongly jailed woman basically ever in the history of the U.S. For 43 years, she was wrongfully convicted. And a judge said that she was factually innocent, which is closest you can get to exoneration. And the state doesn't agree and is arguing against it, wanting to continue her prosecution. But it's not just her that was a victim in this case. There was a cop who actually killed the victim. And when you hear the evidence that they used to cover up, it is so egregious, this poor woman. Anyways, the Missouri's top prosecutor lost his latest effort to challenge the judge's decision to overturn the murder conviction for a killing that her attorneys argue was committed by a discredited police officer. An appellate court sided on Tuesday with him, who was freed in July, while the decision to overturn her conviction was reviewed at the insistence of this attorney general corrupt dude named Andrew Bailey. Presiding Judge Cynthia Martin wrote in a scathing 71-page ruling that some arguments raised by Bailey's office bother, bordered on her words, the absurd, and gave prosecutors 10 days to refile charges. You know there's a problem in the case when the judge is calling their arguments absurd. It's time for this miscarriage of justice to end, Hem's attorney said in a statement. Hem was being treated with, get this, heavy doses of antipsychotic drugs. When she was questioned about the 1980 murder of 31-year-old library worker Patricia Jeschke in St. Joseph, so one of the attorneys, Sean O'Brien, likened the drugs to a chemical straitjacket in an October hearing, said they raised questions about her ultimate confession. It makes her compliant, makes her subject to susceptibility. O'Brien also outlined, outlined evidence that was withheld that pointed to Michael Holman, a former police officer, who died in 2015. Evidence showed that his pickup was seen outside Jeske's apartment. He tried to use her credit card. Her earrings were found in his home. And get this, there's fingerprints on a cable antenna found next to her body with none other than that police officer's, former police officer's prints. The appellate court's ruling said the, rock, the record strongly suggests that police buried their investigation into Holman, the true killer. 43 years this woman has been in prison. Look at that smile. Anyways, this was by the Innocent Project. The same conclusion was reached in June when R Judge Ryan Horsman in Livingston County overturned her conviction. He found that Hen's attorney had established clear and convincing evidence of actual innocence. That's an exoneration, people. Just because somebody's murder conviction is overturned and they don't get, you know, retried and convicted or whatever, that doesn't exonerate them. That just means they weren't retried or they weren't reconvicted. That's all that means. But exoneration is when somebody from the state is saying actual innocence. That's exoneration, people. Bailey asked the appellate court to review that decision, arguing Horsman had ceded his authority and him failed to present sufficient evidence on some of her claims. So what ensued was a month-long fight over we she, whether she should be freed while that review took place. So circuit judge and appellate court and the Missouri Supreme Court all agreed she should be released. But she was still held behind bars because this attorney general argued that she had to serve time on decades-old prison assault cases. Hemi walked free only after Horsman threatened to hold the attorney general's office in contempt. At the latest hearing in October, Andrew Clark, an assistant attorney general, faced tough questioning. One of the appellate court judges noted particular concern about what happened when Holman, the discredited police officer, could not be ruled out as the source of the palm print detected on a TV antenna cable found next to the victim's body. The FBI did ask for clearer prints, but the police, of course, would not follow up. So, why didn't the FBI charge them with obstruction of justice when they asked for something? That's the problem, because the FBI never holds them accountable, despite the fact that laws prevent the things these police do that are often criminal, and the DAs do that are often criminal, they don't enforce the law. Legislative powers who write laws that protect people from corruption, they don't get enforced. Jurors never heard about that or other evidence because the police never informed the prosecutors. The court clerk said in response to questions about the significance of suppressed evidence, 
has to consider what its value is for a future trial, what it would look like. It undermines confidence in the prior verdict. So Clark contended that some of the evidence issue might not have met the bar to be presented in court, a contention the judges questioned. Bailey has a history, get this, of fighting overturned conviction cases. Get this, a St. Louis circuit judge overturned Christopher Dunn's murder conviction and ordered his immediate release. Why? Because among the key evidence used to convict him of first-degree murder was testimony two boys later recanted saying they were coerced by police and prosecutors. This happens all the time across our nation. So Bailey appealed to try and keep Dunn locked up after before he ultimately was released. So, finally, at last, she's finally free. But, yeah, this is, people, why we have to be proactive with our legislators and demand mandatory prosecution laws when a prosecutor, a lawyer, officers, when they violate anything, any type of statute that is a crime for any attorney or cops or anybody that is a violation of integrity, like lying reports, suppression of evidence, withholding exculpatory evidence, supporting another person to perjury, these criminal acts need to be mandated to be prosecuted. And then, and if we can get that law passed on a federal level, then the FBI won't be able to just turn their heads when these cops and these DAs and, and just act with corruption and just kill people and steal their lives. Right? Anyways, that's it for this one. God bless this woman.